The city of Helike was founded in the Bronze Age, probably sometime around 2500 BC. It is mentioned in Homer's Iliad as a participant in the Trojan War, having provided troops to the forces of Agamemnon. The city was located near the Gulf of Corinth, a deep inlet of the Ionian Sea, created by the westward movement of the Anatolian tectonic plate. The surrounding faults can produce earthquakes up to a magnitude of around 6.5 on the Richter scale, although they are uncommon. Around 500 BC, it became the lead city in a confederation of 12 city-states known as the Achaean League, and Haliki was also known as Dodecapolis, from the Greek words Dodeca meaning 12 and polis meaning city. It became a cultural and religious centre and even issued its own coinage. The city adopted the god Poseidon as its patron and built a sanctuary temple dedicated to his name. Ancient Greeks would travel from all over to Haliki to seek the blessing of Poseidon and to take advantage of its status as a trade hub in the region. One day, in the winter of 373 BC, Haliki completely disappeared. The famous traveller and historian Herodotus wrote of the event. There was a great ebb tide in the sea which lasted for a while, and when the foreigners saw that the sea was turned to marsh, they prepared to pass over into Pallene. Then there came upon them a flood tide of the sea, higher than ever before, as the natives of the place say. Amanius Marcellinus, a Roman soldier and historian, stated, Slightly after daybreak, and heralded by a thick succession of fiercely shaken thunderbolts, the solidity of the whole earth was made to shake and shudder, and the sea was driven away. Its waves were rolled back and it disappeared, so that the abyss of the depths was uncovered, and many varieties of sea creatures were seen stuck in the slime. The roaring sea, as if insulted by its repulse, rose back in turn, and through the teeming shoals, dashed itself violently on the islands and extensive tracts of the mainland, flattening innumerable buildings in towns or wherever they were found. The details of these accounts seem familiar within the context of the two major tsunamis that our modern world has witnessed in the past few decades. Witnesses of the Boxing Day tsunami described the same effects as Amanius Marsalinus where the sea rolled back to reveal the normally hidden depths only to come violently crashing back and destroying everything within its path. Roughly 150 years after the disaster, the philosopher Eratosthenes visited the site and reported that a standing bronze statue of Poseidon was submerged in a poros, holding in one hand a hippocamp, where it posed a hazard to those who fished with nets. Around 174 AD, the traveller Posinaeus visited a coastal site still called Helike and reported that the walls of the ancient city were visible still under the water, but not so plainly now as they once were because they are corroded by the salt water. These descriptions indicated that the records were more than myth and legend, but the ruins of the city eluded the many efforts to find them and there was no agreement on the exact location. Archaeologists Historians, professors and explorers wrote, studied and actively searched, trying to discover any trace of the ancient town, but with little success. Throughout the 1800s and 1900s, many attempts were made, including two expeditions by the famous explorer Jacques Cousteau in 1967 and 1976, but all to no avail. In the 1980s, members of the Heliki Society launched the Heliki Project in conjunction with the American Museum of Natural History. Later, in the 1990s, they found a few different potential candidates for the site, but it was not until 2001 that they could say for sure that the ancient city had been found. Further excavations in 2012 revealed the earthquake destruction layer consisting of cobblestones, clay roof tiles and pottery. Excavations are continuing each summer and are still yielding significant archaeological finds. What was once considered legend and myth 
has now been shown to be a real event. Cultures all over the world have myths of a great deluge in our past. In the context of Haliki, perhaps these legends are more credible than we realise. Perhaps someday we will understand the cataclysms of our ancient past.